As we begin our service of celebration this morning, we invite the congregation to stand and to turn and face the processional cross as we join our voices and we sing together our opening hymn. our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And together we confess our sins. Abba, Father, how easily we turn a deaf ear to your living voice in your word, both when you call us to honest account for our thoughts, words, and actions, and also when you speak graciously of your tender fatherly love for us. By living according to our own plans for success, we live the lie that we are somehow indebted to the flesh to fulfill its sinful desires. Have mercy on us, O God, forgive our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. And now, brothers and sisters in Christ, hear God's words of mercy and his words of grace to you. People loved by Jesus, you have not received the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, 
but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Jesus and by his authority, I forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We're blessed with the first of many special uh, pieces of our service today as our puppets bless us with a song. Thank you, Puppets, for that beautiful song. At this point, as we continue our service, we go before our Lord in prayer. We do so to thank the Lord for the ministry of Pastor Darren in our midst. And for that, I invite the congregation to stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacrament, through which you nurture us in your truth 
and feed us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. United through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit, we praise you on this day for your servant, Darren. Grant that he may continue to follow in word and deed the example of your Son, and that together we may serve you now in the church on earth and evermore praise you in the kingdom of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we hear God's word for us this day, read first by Joel Bond and then read by Andrew Bond this morning. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 55, beginning at verse 10. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there to water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but shall accomplish that which I propose. It shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy, and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into sin, and all the trees of the field shall find their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. As we hear together our Lord's words today from the gospel, I invite the congregation to stand as we hear those words together this day. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them, other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated at this time, and yet again we are blessed with special music today, a duet of How Deep the Father's Love by Karen Vaughn and Clarissa Patterson. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Karen and Clarissa. The text for today, this special day, observing 25 years in the public ministry of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, for Darren Andrew Vaughn. The text is from the Old Testament reading in Isaiah chapter 55, where we read these words. For just as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return without watering the earth, so my ways are high above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. Making the earth bring forth and sprout and giving seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So it is with my word, says the Lord, which proceeds from me, it shall not return to me unfulfilled. No, it will accomplish all that I wish and achieve all for which I send it. For you will go out with joy, and you will be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth in joyous song before you, and the trees of the field will applaud. This is the text. Dear friends in Christ, these words from Isaiah chapter 55 in the Old Testament are almost completely gospel. Good news. Good news for people who like the children of the Old Testament had been wandering for years and years and years in darkness, but with hope. With hope of a coming Messiah. And so now the prophet Isaiah says, Come, by wine and milk, without money or without cost. Listen to me and eat what is good. Give ear and come to me. Listen, listen, that you may live. Seek the Lord while he may be found. The emphasis on listen is indicated by the two words in succession. Listen, listen. God's word is to be heard. Confucius, though not a Christian, said, to put the world in order, we must first put the nation in order. To put the nation in order, we must first put the family in order. And to put the family in order, we must cultivate our personal life we must set our hearts right. Do you get the feeling that our world is in trouble? Searching for an answer or answers to its many problems? 
not only in the world, but in our own country and nation, in our own community. What is the answer? Is it to be found in the halls of Congress? Or the chambers of the Supreme Court? Where do we find the answer to life? The prophet Isaiah would say we find it in God's word and action. Actually, in the Hebrew language, word and deed are the same word. God's action, his deeds, are his message. In sending his son, Jesus Christ, he sends a message to the world. And you have been let in on a great secret. The answer for the world, and for us individually, is found here in God's Word. There is the answer. It is where we can find peace for our souls, forgiveness for our sins, purpose in living, guidance for every day. By his word, we are enabled to pray to our Heavenly Father. And he promises to hear us. And he says, I will send you forth with singing and with joy. I will send you forth like the Israelites of old with joy, and you will be led forth with peace. And of course, the word for peace in the Old Testament is shalom. The wholeness of everything. God wants to lead you and me in peace, in shalom, by his Spirit through Jesus Christ. He wants to give us a complete picture of reality. And so we come to him confessing our sins, knowing that he has promised to forgive us. Thank God for that. We come to him in prayer and with singing. And he sends us forth with joy. I grew up on a farm in the southwestern Minnesota. And about this time, actually a little bit earlier in the season, the young stock, the calves, the heifers that had spent the entire long winter in stalls and pens are let out into the barnyard. And this is completely new to them. They go out and they look around, sniff the air, and then begin to run, kicking their heels, shaking their heads, going back and forth. They are filled with joy. And the concern of the farmer is that they realize that fences are not made to go through or jump over, but to contain 
the calves and young stock. Unfortunately, sometimes some's, some get the idea that they can run right through it, and that's when the excitement begins. Not like willful, disobedient calves are we to go out in joy, but to go out in joy expressing our faith and our contentment and happiness. Go out in joy because God has set us free. He has set us free. No longer are we lonely or afflicted. Edward Everett Hale says, never bear more than one kind of trouble at a time. Some people choose to bear three kinds of trouble. All that they have had in the past, can't get that out of their heads, all that they have now, and all they expect to have in the future. Darren, in 25 years, don't try to think back. Those 25 years are gone. With all the problems, the successes and joys, The past, for that God has provided mercy and grace to forgive sin. It's gone. It's past. God doesn't even remember it. Nor should we. The present, the problems may loom larger than they really are, unless we approach them in prayer and turn them over to God. And the future, who knows what the next 25 years will bring, or even tomorrow. You are to go out with joy and be led forth with joy. Peace, shalom. My my father's last words of advice to me were, encourage your people. It was as as if he knew that we were going to be in for a rough time as Christians. We need encouragement. One of the privileges and responsibilities of a pastor is to provide encouragement for our souls from God's Word. There is encouragement for the believer, the lonely, the downhearted, the unsuccessful, the successful, Children, youth, adults, senior citizens. When we learn to deal with life, we realize what one writer said, I asked for strength and was given difficulty to make me strong. I was asked, I asked for prosperity and was given a brain and muscles to work with. I asked for courage and was given obstacles to overcome. I was given, I asked for love and was given troubled people to help. I asked for wisdom and was given problems to solve. I asked for favors and was given 
opportunities. I received nothing that I wanted, but everything that I needed. Go out with joy. Be led forth in peace with the blessing and benediction of God upon you, knowing that your sins are forgiven. With a servant's heart, with trustworthiness, humility, integrity, transparency, being able to delegate to others instead of trying to do it all by yourself. With courage, with a prayer for wisdom, remembering some of the most ordinary of things, like one old farmer said, a bumblebee is considerably faster than a John Deere. Learning some of those plain lessons of life. Rejoicing in faith. Singing with song. Going forth with joy in your heart. And being led forth in peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, the shalom, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Having heard God's word proclaimed this morning, I invite the congregation to stand as we confess our common Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we collect our offerings, and on this special day and during our offering, we will enjoy a special uh, recording from our worship team as they've recorded the song In Time and Eternity, a song written by Pastor Darren. time and eternity, not quite where we want to be, still know that you're here with me, I need your grace, I seek your face, oh Lord, please set me free, it's hard living every day, don't know what to do, what to say, I'm a soldier thrown into the fray. I need to know which way to go. Oh Lord, please show the way. Came into this world of ours. Know the pain and you have the scars. Though you made the earth and lit the stars, you are our light, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ, oh, save us by your might. Heaven's ours, but we live below. The dim future, who can know? Some things come, but then they go. We live too fast, teach us what lasts, and let your blessings flow. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is with gratitude and joy that we give thanks this day for Pastor Darren, who just over 25 years ago was ordained into the office of the Holy Ministry as a pastor. We do praise the Lord that he has permitted his servant Darren to serve his church these many years, and that he has sustained and supported him, and that he has blessed his ministry among us. And so as we recognize this faithful service at this time, I'd like to invite three people to come forward. One, I invite uh, Pastor Emeritus Mark Krieger uh, to come up. Also invite uh, Christ Lutheran Church uh, President Sherry Ann Ports to come up and uh, Pastor Darren himself uh, to come up as well. Pastor Darren, as appreciation and recognition in reaching this milestone in God's calling for you. And on behalf of the congregation, I present this Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Pastor. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here. What an honor and what a privilege. 25 years. You look old. <laughs> Unbeknownst to any of us, uh, doing the eight o'clock service, I'm sitting here and there's a guy in about four or five years dying. Gosh, he looks familiar. I should know that guy. Here's one of my classmates. We graduated together from the seminary, Pastor Daryl Cobbs, a son of our congregation. And his wife will worship people with us. And I went up to Daryl, I said, You look old. <laughs> he had gray hair at the seminary. Yeah. But you know, once they turn gray, they stayed. You didn't find that out, did you? <laughs> Pastor Darren and family, congratulations. And it is a family operation. You all have to be together in prayer and worship and communication. Pastor Dwayne Hewitt, president of our North Wisconsin district, could not be here. He and his wife Cheryl had another commitment. So I'm honored on the district's behalf to share this letter. And as I read and reread this letter, I said, everything that District President Dwayne Lewick says, I say. And it is with a heartfelt appreciation that I share this letter and my own sentiments. Dear Pastor Gary, God's peace be with you. It was the Apostle Paul who first said to the Philippians and put it so eloquently, I thank my God and all my remembrances of you because of your partnership with me in the gospel. I love that word, partnership, because it expresses so well how I have viewed you as a fellow brother of Christ, a partner in our ministry. You have been in partnership with the brothers and sisters in Christ at Christ Lutheran. You have done it with humility and as a true servant of our Lord. Darren, on behalf of our North Wisconsin District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, I want to say thank you for the past 25 years of faithful service in ministry. It is a special day as the members of Christ have planned this event to recognize your service to them. Sit back and enjoy it. Over the years, you have been so blessed. You were raised by wonderful parents as a pastor's kid, and then eventually met Karen at Concordia University in Mequon. You began your ministry on the plains of Kansas, serving a dual parish up north at Cranbourne and Leona before arriving here in Marshfield in 1999. And over those years, God has blessed you with Clarissa and Stephen, Andrew and Joel. And I'm sure as you look back over those 25 years, you can say they have indeed flown by. 
Cheryl and I are able to join you on this festive day. However, we pray that God continues to be with you, Karen and your family, but don't enjoy this day too much as God still has more work and ministry for you to do. Continued blessings, Reverend Dwayne M. Lewick. And to that, I say amen. God's blessing. Thank you. All right, well, thank you to all of you. Uh, 25 years, I, I guess I won't give a big speech here, but uh, it, it means a lot of things. One thing it means is it, I, I seem to have forgotten more than I remember. I don't even remember writing in a song, but, uh, <laughs> and they performed it far better than I ever could have sang it, and I appreciate that. I appreciate everything from, from each and every person being here, to, to the puppets, to my dad preaching, to the gift of the congregation, to working with the congregation and the leadership of the congregation and Pastor Andrew and, and Tammy and, and everyone here, uh, Dana doing so much in the office and, and taking pictures as I speak right now and uh, of course my loving wife Karen who uh, holds me together every day in my family. Uh, I, I'm so blessed with each one of you and uh, it, it really is awesome now having Stephen as part of our family. Like I told you before, now that you're officially part of the family, you have to just be ready to be mentioned in any church service that you attend. <laughs> so, um, I, and I thank God for for each and every day of my life. How each and every day is it, it's better, and how I can look forward to the future with such hope and joy. So, thank you all. continue our service in prayer and as we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion together and for that I invite the congregation to stand. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Abba Father, your children lack for nothing under your gracious fatherly care. Cause us to trust your word and live in our true identity as your beloved sons and daughters adopted by grace. Lord, in your mercy. Abba, Father, your children are suffering and in need of your help. Be present with everyone who is afflicted in body, mind, or spirit, including those in our congregation and community. We pray that you'd free people who are enslaved by addiction. Use your power to heal and bring wholeness to your children both in this world and the next. Lord, in your mercy. Abba, Father, your children gather here at your table so that you can feed us with the precious body and blood of Jesus, our Savior. From wherever we have wandered this week, we have now returned here at your bidding with faith in Jesus' words, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, Abba, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns in communion and love with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear the words of our Lord. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and to confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated and you're invited forward to celebrate communion in just a moment. invite the congregation to stand. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you have now received, may it strengthen and keep you in the one true faith, both now and until life everlasting, depart in our Lord's peace, forgiven and free of all of your sin. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We're so glad that all of you have, were able to be here today to celebrate alongside Pastor Darren and his family. We also uh, have so much thanks to give out for Pastor Stan Bond to be with us for sharing God's word in such a uh, profound way and beautiful way. And also thanks to everyone else who contributed to make this service so special. I encourage you to uh, take the moment to congratulate and talk to Pastor Darren following our service today. And we look forward to seeing all of you back later this morning as we join for a special potluck celebration following our last service around 1145. And so we conclude this service as we sing together our closing hymn. 